Hello guys, I'm so excited that finally I have just received my new book, The Bible of Bodybuilding. It's a book that consists of 400 pages. You can purchase this book on Amazon, and this book contains my format of books, the PDs using sports and the good, the bad, and the ugly, plus the training to use supplementation, but also including extra features, Q&As about gear, about HRT, but also a quiz regarding supplements, and diet, and of course, PDs. So the Bible of Bodybuilding on Amazon, both on ebook and uh, Kindle version. Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Julianos, brought to you by his book, The Bible of Bodybuilding, available on Amazon.com. And of course, if you're on Amazon.com buying books, go ahead and buy my book, Real Bodybuilding. What a great book. And now, all the way from Athens, Greece, please welcome Dr. George Suliatos. How are you, George? So, Ron, on Saturday, um, you know Yanis Mangos, the guy uh, who um, was very close to get the pro card six years ago. Who? And, and slap the IFB judge. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, we're <laughs> friends and... I supervise him with his labs. He's following a TRT. So I visit him in Rhodes in the summer and now he visited me in my office. And as I was here, he was uh, you know, assessing my physique and he told me that I, I look really good for the stuff that I'm taking. Yeah. The point is in order to look super grainy on stage, you know, you need to lose 10 more pounds and this is crazy. Otherwise use the rest of the stuff that I'm not willing to take. The point is, as, as we were there, you know, I got um, a Facebook note that the show will be canceled eventually because of internal affairs between the FEB and the WADA, you know? So <clears throat> we athletes pay the price of this shit, you know? Yeah. And um, the FEB Nationals will be held in North Greece that I don't want to go. It's so far, so far from, from Athens, you know? you know? It's not just an airplane, but you have to drive many hours. So actually, it's the North Greece Championships. Anyway, so I guess this journey stops over here at 198 okay. pounds. And of course, with this, with this um, latest update, you know, we're gonna we're gonna up the we're gonna update the the editorial. Why not do a comeback? Because the show will be not help, you know. But you know. My sister told me, George, I don't believe you could win those guys that are taking tons of tracks in the Martyrs of Brain. Because I was 198 in this picture with, with Mangus. And I have to tell you, I was not satisfied with the hardness of my chest, for instance. My abs were there. My obliques were there. But it was not that the grainy look that I had nine years ago when I was taking all this stuff. Well, and I'm yeah. trying really hard. I'm dieting. You know, I'm doing everything it takes. So let me tell you my cycle. Okay. I suppose we cycle. 0.7 ml testosterone, 0.7 ml Primo, 0.7 ml Deca. 175 milligrams of testosterone, 70 milligrams of Deca of, of Primo, and 35 milligrams of natural. Give me a break. This is not even for the bitch. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. up the dose. <laughs> yeah, not even one ml. Yeah, up the dose, but it's not enough. You need Mastron, you need Trembolone, you need Winstrol. Uh, they will fuck up my life. Sorry, my my. my well, my life. I I get that, but I mean, you couldn't you theoretically say use those just maybe in the last four weeks leading up True. to the contest? True. Yeah, this is another fact. Uh, but seriously, my body fat was uh, seven to seven point five percent, and nine years ago, in the same body weight, I was leaner because I was retaining more muscle because of the juice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, simple as that. You know, it's mathematics. Yeah, I mean, you take drugs, you retain muscle. That's all. That's why the, the, the steroids are anti-catabolic. I, I, you know, you know, a lot of guys now say they're on just TRT and they're just as big. So I don't, I don't think oh, okay. a lot of them are not being truthful. They're just not. There's no way. I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah. Anyway, 
Let's move on to the questions. You know? Sure, let's do Everything it. Everything happens for a reason. Perhaps God wants me to, 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 to live healthy, you know? You, God, wants, God wants you to do more than win a plastic trophy, George. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. And Steve emailed me and told me, George, you look better than any physician in the world. You know, you don't have anything to prove. And hopefully you're going to have this editorial. And if the Olympia education will take place in Vegas, I'll go to Vegas and I'll go to LA three days before for the Per Bernal studio, you know? Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, cool. Well, now we got some drug questions. Here we go. So question one, doctor, what dose of DECA for a cruise would be ideal and safe with 200 milligrams of testosterone a week? That's question number one. How much DECA? Well, I guess 100 milligrams keep the ratio between two to one, you know? But listen to me, no matter how mild is the steroid, in the long term, you're going to have this accumulative thing. So hmm. I bet that after a couple of months, you're going to have distortions in your lipids and perhaps in your liver also, and in your hemoglobin, no matter what. Hmm. Because this process is gradual, and eventually all the drug will accumulate. Hmm. Okay? Wow. Because I mean, 200 sounds like 200 milligrams of test doesn't sound like, that's a TRT dose. No, I'm talking about the nandrolone. Yeah, even 100 milligrams a week could... Is now, speaking up? of you, I believe that your, your drugs are undosed. Wow. Hmm. Because, yeah. because your total testosterone was 2,000, yeah. and you're using 400, and with 2,000, we're supposed to shoot about 1 ml to 50 or even, you know? So definitely, even your deck is underdosed, I bet that. Mm. Yeah, could be. Because you have perfect... perfect uh, um, your liver is not something like you look on steroids, you know? Yeah. I mean, I might just be very lucky too. But yeah, you could be right. We don't know. Unless I could get to a lab. All right. So uh, the second part of this gentleman's question, this is a good question. What is the oil limit for intramuscular injection with insulin needle? He says 0.45 times 13. But and I that, guess one ml is is affordable, you know, in a, in, a, in an average delt, you know, one ml. Hmm. Now, if you have to, or Migram is delt, you can shoot double of this. <laughs> into yeah. your side or your ear better but one ml is what what i used to do and sometimes split half and half you know okay yeah because an insulin needle only holds one ml anyway yeah. yes because he says because here in brazil cypionate is 200 milligrams for two ml so what is that 100 milligrams per ml so yeah that's a weird i've never seen cypionate at, at 100 at 100 milligrams for per ml i've never seen that it's always 200 or 250 that's strange anyway uh, next question. I've been using test only for the last two months. First, 250 milligrams, then 375 milligrams. I've started equipoise at 200 milligrams. Is it good to front load a couple of weeks at 400 milligrams or even 600 milligrams so it'll kick in faster? Don't want to stay for multiple months on gear after these 10 ampules. I'll change to something fast acting. No, man, that's a lot. And <clears throat> frankly, it will start kicking if it's a fast ester, so doesn't mean that if you OD in a slow ester that you're going to have a faster kick. Hmm. So I guess instead of uh, equipose, which is really slow, you can use MPP instead. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I never, I never got the whole front loading thing with these long acting esters because it's just going to take a long time to kick in and 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 get out of your system anyway. I didn't, I don't see the point. Anyway. Uh, next gentleman says, you answered my question in episode 152. As you recommended, I injected my testosterone the day before the analysis. I'm on a cruise of 200 milligrams test enanthate per week. Today, I received my lab analysis back, which looks like the following. Total testosterone. Ooh, he's big. He's higher than me. 2,411.3. Free androgen index. I don't know what that is. 396.2. Oh, that, that's the free test. Okay. Uh, SHBG 608.59 uh, or 6.08. What the hell is that? Um, how should the doc interpret these values? I don't know. Are you reading them? There's, there's a lot of numbers here. Well, it, it sounds them? reasonable that the SHBG is low because of the large dose of the testosterone he did. You know? mm. okay. So when you do a large dose of testosterone, you press on SHBG. And you spike the free testosterone. Okay. Oh, so actually, he did have the estrogen there. His E2 is at 154. He thinks that's at the upper. Yes, this upper is the result of a higher of a spiked free testosterone that converts to estrogen, aromatizes. Okay. okay. In order to to prevent this and you know smooth the 
the aromatization, we break down the testosterone smaller microdose. Okay. Yeah, so he says, what can I optimize? So that would be your suggestion, break up the testosterone yes, dose. exactly. Because it looks like he's doing it all at once a week, I think. Yeah, so you want to do it like every third day, maybe? Yeah, twice a week, twice a week. and then you can do every other day. Okay, here we go. Hey, Doc, 52-year-old Italian bodybuilder here. Question about sildenaf sildenafil. Is that Viagra yes. or Cialis? Which one's that? Uh, sildenafil, that's... That's uh, Viagra, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's a good thing. Is it good to cycle this drug? I would take 25 milligrams AM and 25 milligrams. No, PM. no, no. Actually, yes, it's 25. Yes, it's the Viagra. So it's good to, cy to cycle on and off Cialis because it's a prolonged. Now, Cialis work for 48 hours. Therefore, every other day, you may use five milligrams of Cialis. Okay. Instead of every day because... Viagra kicks in within half an hour, you know, and then it's true. So uh, for a weekend, let's say, you may use the Cialis. So every other day, use the Cialis is more reasonable. Hmm. Yeah, he says, uh, I suffer from very mild erectile dysfunction, mainly during workout days. Also, I read it helps the heart and lowers blood pressure a bit. Uh, it's very, till Todd died. Uh, I mean, mouth, explain. During the workout days, all the blood obviously goes to the skeletal muscle. Hmm. Okay, and it's not left enough for the penis, you know? Damn it. <laughs> I mean, the blood's in your muscles while you're training. I mean, a couple hours later, shouldn't it be back in circulation all throughout the body? Yeah, but it, what if this guy wants to have a sex right after the gym? He's not smart, you know? Dude, you tell him, sir, you need to wait an hour or two. That's what you got to do. Stop being so, uh, I don't know. And he says, tell, tell da, to Dalla. God, I'm sorry. Yes, that's the Cialis. Yeah. That's much more expensive in Italy, I guess. Yeah, I think it's more expensive. They're both super, if you get the actual name brand Viagra in the U.S., I think they go for like 80, 60 to $80 for one pill. Now, right. one pill of 25 in Greece costs uh, five euros, which is six to seven bucks. Well, that's not bad. So 20, 20 euros, which is 30 bucks, is the four pills of 25, 100 milligrams. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's about half price. Yeah, I don't know why it's so expensive. I guess because the drug companies want to make a lot of money. So... Your next one is, I'm 59 and did DECA for about 12 weeks. I did get elevated blood pressure, not way out of whack. It borders on hypertension, hypertension too. Now, a few weeks off, I'm starting to feel joint aches. Is there a safe level of DECA I can do for the joint health that wouldn't affect my blood pressure? Will my blood pressure go back to normal or do I need to go on meds? Yeah, why don't you take some Losartan, for instance, lower your salt intake also because DECA kicks aldosterone that retains sodium that uh, retains sodium and water that smooths the synovial cavities. On the other hand, aldosterone takes up blood pressure. So you can take uh, Losada, which is again the same receptor blocker, and lower your blood pressure will also lower perhaps the erythrocytosis and the elevation of uh, hemoglobin. Wow. Dr. T, could my high out of range hemoglobin and hematocrit values be causing my hypertension? My blood pressure is averaging 140 over 80. I'm 30 years old, 185 pounds, 15% body fat. Yes, absolutely. And since you are 15% body weight, you should lean out, go lose a couple of kilograms and go to 10% because being overweight also elevates blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So the more blood you have, the more viscous you have, it, 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 it forces pressure to the to the walls of the arteries, you know? So you need to get rid of this volume of, blood, of blood that also is able to elevate the blood pressure, you know? Yeah. Uh, so do phlebotomies or a blood donation, hydrate more, uh, lower your dose of the androgens you use, and also drop in body weight and body fat. In this way, your blood pressure will be managed. Cool. Oh, I love this question because I hate DNP. What are your thoughts on DNP, the fat burner? Have you used this drug before? And what was your experience using it? Now, uh, back in 2001, I was hanging out with a crazy dealer uh, who was uh, very notorious and famous for tasting all the drugs in first place before he spread them to his clients, you know? And he said, I have this DNP stuff, a loop priest, tried in uh, for his comeback you know when he was with muscle tech yeah. 
Uh, obviously, he was uh, sponsoring the, the hydroxy cut pill. <laughs> he was using DMP. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I heard the uh, crazy stories of people that used it, la lazy people, okay? No cardio, usually over overweight all year round. And uh, they were taking cold showers, laying down uh, under the air conditioning, you know, suffering, you know, and, and having sweats and, and burning with fever, you know, mm. crazy. So this stuff, this guy told me that take it for a while. And what I noticed in my labs that my TSH, my thyroid was, was messed up a little bit. Mm. I'm not sure if he had some T4 or T3 in, in those capsules, but mm. um, you know, what happens is they kick mitochondria, which is a powerhouse of the cell. Yeah. And there's a lot of energy production, you know? Uh, it's not a classic mechanism like the stimulants that kick adrenaline or epinephrine, you know, and you have the classic heart rate. Hmm. So you burn from inside, from the core, but without the CNS stimulation. Hmm. It's, it's cellular uh, mechanism through the mitochondria, you know? Yeah. And uh, of course, I spoke about this in, in, uh, in other shows. That is, you have to be really desperate in order to try this thing, you know? Hmm. And uh, definitely I do not suggest it for anyone. You have so many things in order to lean out, the stirs, the GH, the stimulants, the cardio, the diet. It's, it's more than enough, you know? Yeah. So you- But you DMP, didn't... I believe there's no way to, if you go to ICU and you have, uh, you, you tell them about DMP, I don't believe there's something that can, they can have as an antidote, you know. Right. You just you're gonna die basically if you take a little too much. It's crazy. Yeah. So you did try it for how long were you using it? I don't know, just for a week, I guess. So mm -hmm. it did was. You, I mean, you, there was there was a remarkable uh, loss and a fat burning effect, but I do not recommend it. This this thing is a poison, you know. Yeah. I mean, I never use it, but I trained one of my a guy I used to train with. He was using it for a contest. And it made him feel so, he had like a flu. He felt so physically terrible that he couldn't even go to the gym to train. You know, he'd like text me, I'm waiting for him. He's like, bro, I'm not going to make it. I, I can't get out, can't get out of bed. I can't get off the couch. Crazy, felt like he was going to die. So yeah, there's plenty of people get ripped without DNP. There's no reason. There's no reason to use it as far as I'm concerned. Lazy, lazy. I, you know, it's not just the athletes. I blame a lot of coaches too. A lot of coaches who don't really know how to get people lean. They just throw, get them on DNP because that'll, that'll get anybody lean, but you know, at a huge, huge risk. So shame on you coaches. Anyway, here we go. Hi, doc. Everybody speaks about having high free testosterone and low SHBG, but in a blood test, we measure free, free testosterone in the blood, not in the cell. So having high free testosterone in the blood does not mean having less free testosterone effective in the cell. Is that correct? Well, um i'm sorry so what happens is for the following uh when testosterone is separated from the ester then it's able to enter the cell and they break down the cell membrane go into the into, into the cytosol and then enter the nucleus and the dna you know so after the separation perhaps in the bloodstream uh of the ester uh, from the compound of testosterone then it is able to get into, into the cell. And actually the free testosterone, which is the one that is not bound to SHBG. Okay, so there's a separation of, let's say testosterone from the enanthate ester, and then the SHBG bounds 98% of the testosterone and leaves a 2% that this 2% is able to enter the cell, the free testosterone. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't matter really what your total is, but the free, this is that works. Okay. Our final question. Hello. Until now, I've used cream for my TRT and would like to change to injections, but I fear it. Can you explain to me the risks of intramuscular injection if a non-medical beginner is doing it? Do I risk my life if I make a mistake and inject into a vein? What happens if I eject in a small blood vessel? Even after control, is there no blood by aspirating? I would like to be fully safe. How should I proceed? Well, I'm injecting uh, steroids 22 years now and I never aspirate, okay? Yeah. Now, occasionally when I take off the needle from my butt, there used to be 
the blood flow of an artery. You know, I had to, to stop it like this, you know. But I was lucky perhaps enough not to inject into uh, a vein. But listen, there was some time that I used to cough a little bit. And this is a small, perhaps, embolism, coughing, okay? It could be also the benzolin, the coughing out of the benzolin, you know, uh, or, the, or the acetate esters, you know, from the train. But uh, I never aspirate. The point is, if you do shallow intramuscular here with an insulin series, you don't have this problem. Now, if you use the large needle into your butt and inject five or six ml of, of, of yeah, I used to do that crazy stuff. Wow. <laughs> yeah, listen, when you want to shoot one or two uh, grams of, of gear per, per, per week, what do you think you have to shoot? A lot of oil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but so, would you, you, wait, would you put five or six ml into one big syringe? I used to do it with windshield, for instance, and I used to do it with uh, testosterone, one gram in one syringe, for instance, five ml. Yes. Wow. That's a, because yeah. I mean, I don't have the genetics wrong. I no, I know, to, I know. But I'm just saying a standard syringe is three, three mls. So you have three, and then you have the five that goes to six also. Wow. You know, yeah. I don't yeah. recommend, of course, this, and I regret about these mistakes, and I was not the doctor I am today. But anyhow, uh, you can do shallow intramuscular with, your, with an insulin syringe over here and don't risk for this deep penetration, you know? Because mm -hmm. the deeper you get, perhaps, the more vessels you're going to hit. Yeah. I mean, I use a 25 gauge, 5 eighths. So it's, it's a little more than half an inch. It's about, you know, yeah. big. It's not, I, in the old days, I used to go a one and a half inch syringe. That was crazy. That would go- When, like, you're, oh, when you're overweight off season, sometimes, yes, in the glutes. I put my glute, my glutes used to be, you know, I used to squat crazy weights. My ass was this big. So an inch and a half syringe was not a big deal. I had big, big butt. But yeah, I wouldn't, I would never go with a needle that long ever again. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, doctor, that is all our questions. Uh, guys, please, if you like these videos, share them. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell for notifications, get Dr. T's book on amazon.com, the Bible of bodybuilding. Please do all that good stuff. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you right here next week on Ask Dr. Testosterone. Good.